it's Audrey, and this is going to be a video editing tutorial uh, specifically on how I edit my footage to have these kind of retro TV effects. I'm not really sure how to say it. If you haven't watched the video I posted about my editing process, uh, I'd recommend watching that first because I cover info about my equipment, the programs I use, other basics, and I'm just going to jump right into the tutorial for this one. Starting off with the TV turn on, turn off effect. This is my clip I filmed, and this is with the effects added. Going into Adobe Premiere, I have a few sequences in my timeline labeled for each effect I'm going to share, but let's focus on the one that I've named TV turn on, turn off. I've already imported my clip into the timeline. And making sure it's selected, I'm moving over here to Effect Controls. There's a list of settings to the left, and then to the right, there's another timeline that you can see uh, corresponds to the one on the bottom, where this top one is just for the one video clip, while the bottom is for your entire sequence. Under the Motion Properties, this checkbox is usually checked, but unchecking this will allow me to manipulate the height and width of my footage separately, which you cannot do if the uniform scale setting is on. So uncheck, very important. And then to the left, you'll see these buttons that kind of look like a stopwatch. Clicking this lets us toggle the animation of whatever setting you're clicking this button for. In this case, we want it for the scale height and scale width. You can see that these little markers have shown up. And what this has done has created a point in the timeline called a keyframe. I use keyframes in every single video I edit. Once you know how to use them, the possibilities are truly endless, but we'll start small with this. Zooming in a bit. I'm going to change both the height and width from 100 to 1, which makes our footage super tiny. Don't want to leave it like this though, so using the right arrow key on my keyboard, I'm going to move five spaces or ticks to the right. One, two, three, four, five. Leaving the scale height at one, but adding a keyframe there and changing the width value to 100, which automatically adds a keyframe as well. Uh, this has stretched the video to its full width while keeping the height really small. So to bring that to its full scale, I'm using my arrow keys again, moving the five spaces to the right, changing the height to 100, and adding a keyframe to match that change for the width. You can move between the keyframes you've added, and moving back and forth it might seem a little choppy, but if I use my arrow keys to move through each like millisecond, you can see that the transition is much smoother than that. Stop here if you want, uh, but I like to add static to this animation for just an added effect. And the way I do that is by going to effects and typing in noise, which should be under noise and grain. So you just want to double click this, which pops up under the effect controls. Adding a keyframe to this noise effect with a value of 0%. I'm placing this just after the last of the scale keyframes we've already made as well as another keyframe in line with that last scale keyframe at 100%. I have no idea if that made any sense, but just kind of look at the keyframes here. You just want it to line up this way. Demonstrating how that turned out, at the beginning of the clip has this static effect throughout that animation at the beginning, and then abruptly changes to no static. I also like to add a sound effect to finish it off, and I get all my sound effects from Epidemic Sound. I've already imported this TV turn on sound into my project to drag it into the audio under this video clip. And the beginning of the sound effect matches perfectly with the beginning of the footage, so I'm just going to leave that as is. This audio clip also has the TV turn off sound at the end of it as well. I just need to line it up correctly so it corresponds with my video footage. When that's done, I'm adding more keyframes to the end of the video clip uh, to create that same animation that we've already done, but in reverse so it looks like the TV, so to speak, is turning off. 
and that is how that's done. Next, the second effect is this glitchy transition, uh, kind of like changing the channel. Here I have a few clips, and going through this really quickly, it goes from putting a straw in my iced coffee to bringing the cup to my desk. The transition between these two clips is just a natural transition, whereas in between the scene from the kitchen to my desk, um, technically I could have filmed a lot more to add between this. I usually add a channel change effect or transition in between scenes when I want to change the subject or the location abruptly. I'll put it here because I think that kind of fits. I'm actually going to add the sound effect first to make it easier on myself when I'm creating the animation. Going back to my sounds I've already downloaded. This one is a radio static sound, dragging it over and underneath. I'm only going to use this one particular part of the sound clip and delete the rest. And then I'm going to place that in between those two video clips I want to transition. Once that's in place, I'm going to go to File, New, Adjustment Layer, OK. And it should show up here in the project materials. Bringing this into the timeline, I want to line this up and trim it to the size of the static sound effect I cut earlier. Think of an adjustment layer as an overlay for you to edit without changing your original footage too much. And then going into effects, typing in offset and double clicking, so that's added to my adjustment layer. We're going to click the little stopwatch for a keyframe just under the shift center two. And we want to place this at the beginning of the adjustment layer. And then add another one like three fourths of the way. I'm going to change this value to where it says 540 to 1000 instead. And you can see what that's done. Uh, the center of the video has moved from the top and down. Alternatively, changing the 960 value would move the video left or right, uh, but we're not going to touch that. Clicking on this first keyframe and using my keyboard controls to copy it, I'm going to bring the playhead to the end of the adjustment layer, paste that keyframe there to bring the center back to the beginning position. And if you play that, it creates an almost glitch effect. Adding just a few more things, um, I'm going to copy and paste this adjustment layer so I have an identical one just above it, but deleting the offset effect and adding noise just like we did with the TV turn on turn off effect with the value at 100%. Moving on to how I create this overlay that I like to put over my footage sometimes. Here's the clip I'm going to demonstrate with. I'm actually going to use Photoshop to make a PNG file that I can drag into the timeline, kind of like how I use the adjustment layers. I use the HDTV preset while making a new document, and I'm just going to name this Vintage 4x3 because I have no imagination. Just make sure to set your pixel dimensions to the same size as your video sequence, uh, in my case, it's 1920 by 1080. The background contents should be black, and then hit create. You'll end up with this plain black rectangle. Uh, let me just get rid of the guides really quick. And on the left where my toolbar is, I want the rounded rectangle tool. It doesn't matter what color your rectangle is, as long as it's solid and not black. I'm changing the dimensions to 1440 by 1080. That is the 4x3 ratio in relation to the size of my black background. 4x3 is also the ratio of standard definition television, which is kind of what I'm going for. Uh, you can leave it to this size to fill the entire screen, uh, but I like to see a bit of a black border around the white rectangle, so I'm going to shrink it down. Uh, not too much though, while keeping that aspect ratio. And then I'm going to merge these layers just by selecting both of them in the layers panel, right click, and then hit merge layers so that it's just one. And then back to the toolbar, you want the magic wand tool or the W key shortcut. Select the white rectangle, and then you can either go to the edit menu and select cut, 
or use the command X shortcut to give yourself that transparent cutout. I want to blur out the edges of this a little. Uh, so with the top toolbar, I'm selecting filter, blur, and then I believe this is pronounced Gaussian blur. I'm not sure though. This window will pop up and if you have preview on, you can change the radius to whatever value you like the look of the most. But I like this at about five pixels and then hit okay. That is it for the editing. You can export it at this point by just going to file, click export as PNG, and then save. You can import into your video to place wherever you want. And if this overlay ends up covering too much of one side or you wanna change the position of what's shown, just click your video layer to change the position in the effect controls. And that is that. Last of all, color grading. I still wanna do a separate video focusing on just that, but also wanted to share a few things I did with this particular footage. I started off with an adjustment layer so I could easily add some changes to these three video clips at once. Went into effects and applied Lumetri color. And if you watched my photo editing tutorial for Adobe Lightroom, I do a lot of the same edits. I took down the whites since my footage was kind of blown out in the bright areas. I increased the faded film setting, took down the sharpness, and decreased the vignette. I also played with the curves a little by adding a tiny bit of red to the shadows, not much. And using this first clip as my base, I then went into color, color comparison, and then made adjustments so I could color match everything. I don't usually have to do this too much though. Uh, the lighting while I was filming these was just really off that day. So I think that's going to be it for the tutorial. Also wanted to add that I'm completely self-taught, so if you're more advanced than I am and there's an easier or faster way to do this, I'm totally open to constructive criticism. I'm not an expert at all. I'm just someone that likes video editing. I hope you enjoyed, found it helpful, and I'll see you in the next video.